Isolated Languages of North America, presented by Sean Van Heel. In this presentation, I will use the term Native American to refer to all peoples who inhabited North, Central, and South America before the arrival of Europeans, as well as those who live in the Americas and are affiliated with indigenous communities today. Now, what is an isolated language? Well, simply stated, it is a natural language with no demonstrable genetic relationship with other languages. That is to say that it is one that has not been demonstrated to descend from an ancestor common with any other language. Language isolates are, in effect, language families consisting of a single language. Zdenek Salzman, linguistic anthropologist, tells us in his 1993 book, Language, Culture, and Society, an Introduction to Linguistic Anthropology, that there are many languages that do not appear to be related to any other. These single-member language families are referred to as language isolates. He goes on to say that the Americas have been more linguistically diversified than other continents. At the time, in 1993, Salzman estimated the number of total languages at about 6,000, saying, it is impossible to even guess at how many languages must have become extinct in prehistoric times. He goes on to number the Native American language families in North America at more than 70, and more than 30 separate isolated languages. Today, the current 2016 number, derived from ethnologue languages of the world, lists 86 surviving isolates around the globe. In North America, it lists 16 with the Kootenai language being considered as the last remaining Canadian isolate. How do we try to connect isolated languages to other language families? Well, we use two specific methods, linguistic and genetic. We have already covered linguistic connections. We know how it is possible to identify similarities between known languages, connecting and corresponding them to current language families. Based on correspondences, the linguists suggest possible genealogical connections between these languages. So, since we know a bit about linguistic connections amongst language families, let's jump into the genetic data being used to connect isolated languages to other language families. Luigi Luca Cavalli Savorza, Italian population geneticist, suggests that at the time of a split, with one group of people moving away from another, that we see both a genetic and linguistic isolation. So thus, if we can genetically connect an isolated group with a larger family, it will not only show us a possible linguistic connection, but also a genetic migration pattern. Language follows the people. In an article exploring and explaining Native American communities and their genetic lineage, Dr. Deborah Bolnick, professor at the Department of Anthropology for the University of Texas at Austin, uses recent advances in molecular genetics to investigate the evolutionary history and biological diversity of Native Americans. In her research, she considers genomic data in conjunction with other lines of anthropological and biological evidence. She says that the last decade has witnessed a remarkable transformation in anthropological genetics as researchers have adopted next generation DNA technologies. One of these technologies that she is speaking of is whole genome sequencing, also known as WGS, full genome sequencing, complete genome sequencing, or entire genome sequencing, a laboratory process that determines the complete DNA sequence of an organism's genome at a single time. Now, this whole genome sequencing should not be confused with DNA profiling, which only determines the likelihood that genetic material came from a particular individual or group, and does not contain additional information on genetic relationships, origin, or susceptibility to specific diseases. Can these tests help isolated languages answer questions about their past? In the case of the European isolate Basque, it did. Many researchers have assumed that Basque must represent a relic language, spoken by the hunter-gatherers who occupied Western Europe before farmers moved in about 7,500 years ago. But a new study contradicts that idea and concludes that the Basques are descended from a group of those early farmers that kept to itself as later waves of migration swept through Europe. In the new study, led by population geneticist Matthias Jacobson of Uppsala University in Sweden, researchers sequenced the genomes of eight ancient skeletons found in the heart of Basque country, from El Portolón cave in northern Spain. They were clearly farmers and not hunter-gatherers, based on their later age and on the typical artifacts, including pottery, that were found in the graves. 
After extracting DNA from the skeletons and sequencing their genomes, the team compared their genetic profiles with more than a dozen from skeletons spanning the hunter-gatherer and early farming periods in Western and Central Europe, ranging from 8,000 to about 5,000 years ago. They also compared the ancient DNA with more than 2,000 genomes from modern-day Europeans. As in earlier studies, the team found that the genomes of ancient European farmers represented a mixture of genes from earlier, indigenous hunter and gatherers, and incoming agriculturalists. But today's Basques turned out to be more closely related to the El Portolone farmers than to any other group in the study, including early hunter-gatherer genomes. So, in conclusion, did we learn anything? We discussed two specific methods, linguistic and genetic, that are used to connect isolated languages with their ancestors. And that when a group splits off from another group, it takes both of these linguistic and genetic traits with them. We also scratched the surface on some new genomic practices and saw how they apply to current day isolates. In closing, I believe that there are a lot of questions that need answers. Isolates that lack history, I feel like the answers are in a race with the questions, and if we don't race fast enough, the people who have the answers will be dead, and the questions will never be answered. Thank you.